Okay. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the annual celebration for the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau. My name is Mary Claire Olson Potter, and I'm president of the chamber, and I'm thrilled to welcome you here tonight. We are so excited to have you here to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Hudson Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> After the past couple years, I'll be honest, I wasn't really sure what would happen, but here we all are because of you and your resilience. Tonight, we'll be filled with great memories of where we have been while also looking to the future accomplishments of 2022, and a look ahead to 2023, and the presentation of several awards. All right, so um, as you continue to enjoy your dinner, I want to recognize those who have served on chamber committees this past year. At your places is the 2022 annual reflections piece. This is a take home for you. Um, it lists a few highlights from the year that Angel will cover, uh, but also a list of all the folks that participated on the committees this past year. So thank you to all who have served. We appreciate your involvement and could not have accomplished what we did this past year without you. So thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to introduce a few special guests that are joining us tonight and invite them to stand. Mayor Rich O'Connor, City of Hudson. And his life, lovely wife, Cindy, is with us tonight, too. Thank you. Also joining us tonight, we have the City Administrator, Aaron Reeves. We have the Assistant City Administrator and Community Development Director, Mike Johnson. <laughs> Common Council Member, Sarah Brooke, representing District 5. <laughs> Council Member, Joyce Hall, representing District 6. <laughs> Council Member, Joy Knutson, representing District 3. Council Member Mike Kennedy, representing District 4. And please join me in giving a shout out to Nate and Jeff from the River Channel for being here tonight to record this event. As we are celebrating 70 years, we have several past chairs that are in the room tonight. So at this time, I invite them to please stand and be recognized. Now, okay, you know who you are. You are a past chair. All right, there we go. Thank you so much. We have several sponsors tonight that are listed on your program. A special thank you to the Platinum sponsor for this evening. With their representatives from Citizen State Bank, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> and we welcome Sean Tyler, the new president and CEO of Citizen State Bank, Tom Van Pelt. <laughs> Tom Van Pelt just retired after 44 years in the banking industry. Wow, that's amazing. All right. And then also we had three different levels of sponsorships again tonight, gold, silver, and bronze. And we really appreciate all of these sponsors. And I just invite you to hold your applause until all sponsors have been named. We have seven gold sponsors tonight, ABG Holdings LLC, Croy Gear and Machining, First State Bank and Trust, Midwest One Bank, Royal Credit Union, Valley Companies, Wisconsin Credit Union. The following are the silver sponsors, Bremer Bank, County Market, Derrick Companies, Eckberg Glamours, Hudson Hospital and Clinic, Market Johnson, Pier 500, Tullis Property Services Plus Solutions. And the following are our bronze sponsors, Angels Pet World, Baldwin Lightstream, CBD Hudson, Critical Coordination, 
McNamee Real Estate Team, Stevens Engineering, and Sun Control Wisconsin. Please join me in giving a warm round of applause for all of our sponsors. It takes a lot of people to put this event together every year, and we are so thrilled and want to thank the committee that helped us this year. Kathy Blydinger with Cardinal Health, Angel Dorati with Angel's Pet World, Mark Garrity, Melissa Kramer with Wisconsin Credit Union, Mimi Fair, Katie Krantz with First State Bank and Trust, Mark McNamee with McNamee Real Estate Team, Angela Popenhagen with Stevens Engineering, Nick Vivian with Eckberg Lammers, Brian Zeller with Tullis Properties Services Plus Solutions, and Trisha Christensen and her entire team. Please join me in giving them a warm thank you. We also want to give a special thank you to Shelly of the Hudson Flower Shop for providing the beautiful table arrangements. Thank you, Shelly. And to Dave Kenoki with Kenoki's Chocolates and Nuts for the caramels. Yay, Dave. I think I started that a couple years ago because I always thought two desserts were better than one. <laughs> and plus he drops them off at the chamber office and I might inflate the number just a little bit about how many we need. And a huge thank you to Tattersall Distillery for hosting tonight's event. Tonight they're offering all guests 10% off of their retail shop. And if you book an event here within a week, you get 10% off of that event. So please join me in thanking the entire staff of Tattersall Distillery. <laughs> Just a quick show of hands. For how many of you, is this your first time to Tattersall? Wow. Okay. That's great. And how many of you never raise your hands when you're asked? <laughs> okay. To do the work that we do, we rely on all of you as members to help us implement the plan of action that the board approves each year. In addition, we appreciate the many partnerships we have throughout the community. First and foremost, a huge thank you to Trisha Christensen and her team. I always get choked up at these events um, for all their work helping to elevate the chamber locally, regionally, and um, created enhancing all the tours and brochures we do. And thank you to the uh, City of Hudson staff along with all the elected officials who support our work and help us execute all the community events. Um, it truly is a partnership um, with all of you that we can do what we can do. In addition to all the events and programs that took place in 2022, the Chamber Office moved to a new location uh, to increase visibility, accessibility, and long-term cost savings. Yes. So I want to thank the many partners who made that happen for us. ABG Holdings, LLC, the building owner. Yay. Thank you for inviting us. We so appreciate Studio EA, G5 Construction, Christensen Creative, Noble Electric Solutions, CD Products, Baldwin Lightstream, Comcast Business, Carpenter St. Croix Valley Nature Center, StarTech Computing, and Sun Control Wisconsin. A round of applause. And there's always those last bit of details that we really need that extra set of hands. So thank you to the following who moved boxes, cleaned out the office and the storage unit, Angel Dorati, Leanne Van Allen, Blake Willem, Tim Foster, and to Angel McMenamin, who recruited her son James, and his fabulous National Honor friends, uh, students who definitely did the heavy lifting of moving all of those things. So we are planning an open house for this spring, and we look forward to our continued work with all of you. A round of applause for that move. Before I introduce our speaker, I want to recognize two chamber staff members. We are a small but mighty team, and they step, every day, step up every day to work for you in this community. And we could not have accomplished what we did in 22 without their dedication and hard work. 
I've learned much from both of them and I'm grateful for their dedication and commitment. I invite Lauren Battis and Tyler Warlick Mick to please stand and be recognized. I will say we do have fun along the way though, right? Okay, very good, very good. All right. At this time, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce Meg Heaton. Meg moved to Hudson in 1989 and was a reporter with the Star Observer for 27 years before retiring in 2017. Meg has been active in several organizations over the years, including helping the Chamber with tourism marketing in the 1990s. Meg was my first friend when I came to Hudson when I moved to town in 1996 and remains a good friend today. Please join me in welcoming Meg Heaton. I forgot how much fun these events could be. You know, just clapping and drinking and eating and all that stuff. What could be better? Mary Claire knows how to throw a very good party. Are we agreed? I used to love these events when I was with the Star Observer because it was the only time the company paid for anything. <laughs> So I want to thank her for that very kind introduction, and we have been friends for a long time, even though I took pictures of her when her hair was not so good, and uh, other things along the way. But I have enjoyed just even being here tonight, sitting at the table with Mark and John and the mayor, and reminiscing about Hudson. I've been out of the loop, so to speak, since 2017, and it's funny, you know, in the first several years I was retired, I could still walk downtown and know people, and I could, you know, talk to people about things, and oh, they'd say they missed me and that kind of crap, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and I was at the Y the other day with my daughter, and she said, Jesus, Mom, we got all the way back to the locker rooms, and nobody knew you. <laughs> so I am very grateful to Mary Claire for bringing me forward tonight for one more shot. <laughs> Uh, I was a little worried a little bit because as a reporter you're not always the most welcome person in the in the room but I'm very pleased to be here with you all tonight to to mark this very special milestone in the organization that's been such an important part of the community and it's been an important part of my professional life the chamber harangued us on a regular basis to make sure that we got the coverage right the business community was always a regular part of my job. Uh, every week when we had a staff meeting, we, one of the things that always came up was, what's the new business that's got to be covered? What's the award that they, this business got? Uh, what, is, what, you know, what do we need to, to highlight about our business community? And we always had a business section in the Star Observer. And so you people were always incredibly important to us. And if we didn't notice you on our own, Mary Claire and the Chamber made sure that we did. Uh, the Chamber and I, unfortunately, are the same age, 70. <laughs> and looking out at all of you, the organization is not showing its age at all. I think that that's sort of the secret to the Chamber's success over the years, uh, the ability to grow and change in service to not just what the members needed, but what all of us in Hudson needed. I grew up on a farm just across the river, and we made regular trips to Foss's Feed Mill when, in the 50s and 60s. They had a really great candy machine in Wally Foss's office, and <laughs> there was a great horse watering trough, some of you may remember, that was across the street that was great fun to play in. And downtown Hudson in those days was as busy as it is now. Uh, that hasn't changed. Um, you could get everything you needed in downtown Hudson in those days, whether it was groceries or hardware or prescriptions or cars or clothes, a Barbie doll at the Ben Franklin, even a lawyer or a doctor, you could get there. And that vibrant and diverse community is what drove the movers and shakers in Hudson to establish the chamber back in 1953. Uh, over the decades, Hudson has saw impressive growth, a pattern that has remained consistent throughout the years. And the Chamber and its members work together to pro not just to promote their own success, but to attract and help new businesses to do the same. And I know that's what you all continue to do now. 
994 might have seemed like it was going to zoom people right past Hudson, but that was not the case. It didn't turn out that way. Quite the opposite was the fact. Hudson has always been very conscious and very proud of its history, a nod to Willis Miller, and chamber leaders are part of that history. Those early years, they were led by people like John Hanley, Oscar Sandeen, Don Culgren, and Arnie Bertelson, all names that are fixed in our memories. We have Arnie and the chamber members in 1959 to thank for committing to improving parking in downtown Hudson by purchasing the land at 3rd and Walnut. That was a chamber purchase back then for the first parking lot. And unfortunately, parking seems to be still a priority in Hudson. <laughs> The 1960s were led by, among others, Dick Mueller of Mueller's Hardware, who we all remember affectionately. The same goes for Fred Kramer of Dick's Bar Frame, and Dorothy Jones, who appears to have been the first woman to have led the chamber. Um, Dick Mueller said it probably best. He was chamber president for two, over two times, and he said it succinctly, and it's still true. The chamber was there when we needed it. Business life expanded in the late 60s when the new four-lane highway prior to 94 went from Eau Claire to Hudson. It led to the creation of The Hill. It was of such importance that Marion Benoit, who was our frightening and fierce proofreader at the Star Observer, dictated that it was forever to receive a capital H whenever we wrote about it. The first major retailer and big box store was to, did anybody guess what it was? Fleet Farm, where all the candy smelled like tires. <laughs> it was a great place, oh my God. My dad thought he died and gone to heaven. The Hudson House came after, the Hudson House was there as well, Grouchy's Cafe, Mueller's Hardware, and dozens of other businesses that went in along that way. Growth continued through to Hudson through the 70s, and the community was impacted both good and bad. The drinking age in the state was lowered from 18 to 18 in 1972. We all remember that, and depending on your age and the business, those were either the best of times or the worst of times. But then again, Wednesday was banana night at Dibbo's, and with any kind of luck, you ended up with Bertha's banana cream pie on Thursday, all you could eat. But the chamber and the local businesses and the community weathered it all. all. All the while, more and more businesses and families were coming across the river to make Hudson home. It's just been a continual growth. Throughout the past decades, Hudson has seen a lot of changes with some long-standing businesses leaving, closing, and new enterprises coming and going, only to be replaced by someone else who wanted to look for their chance at success. The 80s brought more changes with reinvention and development of places all over town. Hudson Hospital got bigger, the Phipps Center for the Arts, Lakefront Park, the expansion of the industrial parks, and the new use of places like Telgren Square and the Opera House. And we hit it big when both Walmart and Kmart came to town and brought even more businesses and restaurants and services to town. Chamber presidents in the 90s read like a who's who in Hudson. Dwayne Bakke, John Knudsen. John, I mentioned you. I'll mention you twice. Al Burchill, Brett Weller, Dean Knudsen. Dean, I'm mentioning you and not the other thing we talked about. And, uh, and Paula Stolp. For some, the decade could be called the dog days of Hudson, referring, of course, to the creation of the St. Croix Meadows dog track, which operated from 1991 to 2001. Ten years, I didn't remember that. And, but while the track never panned out, I don't think people in Hudson ever wanted to bet on their pets. They just didn't work. The chamber and its members continued to grow. And fortunately for all of us, there was a hometown girl at the helm in those years. We'd have to mention the late Kitty Rhodes, who we lost way too early in 2016. She was a force of nature who was passionately committed to Hudson. Even after she moved on from the chamber, she went on to serve as a representative for all of us in the state assembly and as a member of Governor Walker's cabinet. It was during her tenure that the chamber officially took on the promotion of tourism throughout the area. 
She recognized that while some places up the river may think they are the best destination for travelers looking for fun and culture and history, not so. Hudson had it all and more going on for it. She proceeded to get members, to get me chamber members, the city, even the state on board with the idea and created not just a new name, but an expanded mission for what became the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau. Chamber leaders like Kim Heineman, John Marnell, Vance Hasmeyer, and Mimi Fair, and others got behind the initiative, and Hudson has since been recognized as a premier destination for visitors. Over the last 30 years, the chamber has con continued to serve not only the original mission, but expand its role to the community at large by supporting the expansion of service and manufacturing businesses that bring new jobs and new residents to the area. It has supported and contributed to the community celebrations like Booster Days, our parade thing, <laughs> the Pepper Fest, Hot Air Affair, oh my God, and St. Croix Music and Art Festival and Light Up Night, and most spectacularly, organizing the amazing lights that showed up in Lakefront Park over the last several years. And of course, there's my personal favorite, the Tour of Homes, which had me annually returning to my house to throw rocks at it. <laughs> my Sam Miller house where, Jesus Christ, couldn't we just paint the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> the chamber has also looked to recognize and honor members and those in the community have gone the extra mile not only to be successful, but to be good citizens and benefit the community at large through their service and volunteerism. And before I conclude, I have to commend Mary Claire and the board and her staff, as well as so many of the members who did so much to help the whole community weather the big C. COVID was a shock for all of us. But through all those dark and difficult days, the chamber did not stick its head in the sand, but rather stepped forward to offer whatever assistance it could to help us get through it. Working closely with the Hudson COVID Task Force, the chamber and several members who I see in the audience tonight took on the role of supporting the business community and the customers and keeping them informed as to how to keep, get through this very tough experience. That included seeing Mary Claire schlep up and down the streets with hand sanitizer and wipes <laughs> all over town. And for those of you interested, she has some underneath her desk and in the trunk of her car. These past two years have been tough, but in many ways are a reflection of the previous decades when it comes to the business community, all of you in Hudson. You are without a doubt an incredibly resilient bunch who have chosen wisely to be part of the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau. And 70 sure looks better on you than it does on me. So happy birthday to you all. Thank you, Meg, so much. We appreciate your willingness to present the chamber through the years. And if you do need hand sanitizer or wipes, yes, we still have some available. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's a true story. <laughs> All right. Um, at this time, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce the 2022 Chair of the Hudson Chamber Board of Directors, Angel Dorati with Angel's Pet World. Angel has been... Okay. While she's walking up here, Angel has been a very active chair this past year, guiding the board and working with the staff. She has been extremely helpful and supportive to me, and I thank her so much for her leadership and dedication to the organization. But I'm really pleased that she continues to stay on the board as the past chair. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Angel Dorati. Um, welcome to the annual celebration of the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce. 
I would like to introduce and recognize the 2022 Chamber Board of Directors and ask that they stand as their names are announced. Please hold your applause until all are announced. The following 10 directors will continue the roles in 2020, 2023. I ask them to stand as their name is read. Leanne Van Allen, University of Wisconsin River Falls, Chair. Joel Larson, Midwest One Bank, Treasurer. Mark Hine, Integrity Cleaners. Chris Cost, YMCA in Hudson. Katie Kranz, First State Bank and Trust. Linda Lakoski ing Miniman Press, Hudson, Cherry Lect. Mark McNamee, McNamee Real Estate Team. Deb Pittman, Hampton Inn and Suites by Hilton. Kevin Urbick, Haywood Carey, Carey and Anderson. Blake William, Weather Safe Restoration Incorporate. Please join me in recognizing them all for their time and hard work. At this time, I am pleased to introduce the new board members for 2023 and ask that they stand as their name is read. Her Heath Earnwriter, Cardinal Health, Maria Maximus, Citizen State Bank. We welcome these new board members and look forward to their leadership in the upcoming year. There is one member who has completed two terms, including serving as chair of the board, Kathy Ablidinger, with Cardinal Health. Kathy is unable to be here tonight, but we are pleased that she will continue to serve as chair of the Chamber Foundation. Looking back over this past year, our businesses continue to come together to overcome incredible hurdles. We are proud of our efforts to enhance community awareness of the Hudson Chamber businesses through our social media promotions and chamber check promotions to keep do dollars local. The Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau is dedicated to supporting your businesses' success and helping you thrive in the community as we look for continued recovery. This past year was another busy one for the Hudson Chamber. As you can see by the annual reflections piece at your tables, we continue to pivot in all areas as we work to provide value to help your business. Here are just a few highlights. With the continued work of volunteers, added 61 new members, resulting in a membership of 440 and retention rate of 90%. Increased the number of attendees for events, drawing over 2,000 for the Hudson Community Expo, 9,500 for the Spirit of St. Croix Art Festival, 1,530 for the Christmas Tour of Homes, held Manufacturers Day at the Hudson High School with over 200 students meeting with companies at the school and touring three manufacturing facilities. Increased social media presence and carried out a new tourism event campaign that targeted over 8,000 people and the goal to increase hotel stays. Coordinated with partners and donors to present the fourth annual Buena Vista, a stroll in the park, a stroll in the park holiday lights event in Lakefront Park featuring over 375,000 lights. Thank you to the Chamber volunteers who spend countless hours working on these events. These are just a few of the accomplishments that would not have been possible without the continued support of our members, and we thank you so much for your involvement. <laughs> Finally, on a very sad note, in 2022, we said goodbye to several outstanding business and community leaders. Ken Heiser and Ron and Jean, Jean Troyer, they have left a legacy in this community, will live on forever, and we thank them for all they did to make Hudson a better community. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Leanne Van Allen, 2023 Chair of Board of Directors. Thank you. 
Angel, thank you for all you've done. On behalf of the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau, we want to thank you for your time and your leadership um, as the 2022 board chair. 2022, as we just heard, was a busy year, um, a time of transition, and you were an integral part of the chamber's success and ensured that the organization continued to move forward and accomplish its priorities. Your enthusiasm, dedication, and loyalty to the community, your staff, and the chamber has made an impactful difference in the community. You helped grow the chamber as chair of the membership committee, and you were an integral volunteer for every event. We look forward to your continued involvement on the board. On behalf of the chamber, I am pleased to present you with a beautiful gift in appreciation for all your time and dedication. All right, now as we heard about 2022, we get to take a look at 2023 and what's to come. At our recent December retreat, the board and committee chairs spent time reviewing accomplishments and setting plans for 2023. At the January board meeting, the board approved the 2023 plan of action, which, po which will be posted on the chamber's website. The following top five priorities were agreed upon, and this is what our focus will be for 2023. First being membership. With membership, we're gonna deliver recognized value that results in creating awareness and interest in supporting local businesses. Next is connections. Develop and coordinate engaging events throughout the year that meet member needs. Next is promotion. Increase economic benefits of tourism by marketing the Hudson area. Then comes recruitment and engagement. Develop partnerships to help Hudson area employers attract and retain skilled workers and help them engage in the community. And then the Chamber Foundation. Support the community financially with a focus on advancing education and workforce development initiatives. The board has included measurable goals in the 2023 plan for each program, event, or committee and will provide quarterly updates to our members. Thank you to the board, committee members, and all volunteers for your time and participation this last year. I look forward to working with you in 2023. And now this is always a very exciting part of the program, our awards. I am now pleased to introduce John Knudsen to present the Chamber Member of the Year Award. Please join me in welcoming John. Thank you, Leanne. Good evening, what a night we have going tonight. Thanks to Mary Claire and the chamber staff again. I'm John Knutson. Meg Heaton would tell you I'm the grain of sand in the swimsuit of humanity. Yeah, Ray? Yeah, more like a rock. More like a rock, more, more like a boulder, right? You know, it was a great talk, Meg. Let me be clear on one thing. I'm not nearly as old as the chamber. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, ouch. Uh, <laughs> Kitty Rhodes was mentioned, and man, we lost a good one in Kitty Rhodes. Uh, when Kitty Rhodes was the chamber president, and I was the board chair at the time after, at the ceremony, just like Angel got a very nice gift here, my gift from uh, Kitty Rhodes is a box of chalk so I could draw my own line and then cross it. <laughs> I thought it was very... Very fitting. So, uh, you know, so let's let's just get right to the awards, right? That's why we're here. So I, I understand I was supposed to get a, a new chamber award tonight, the Humble Award for Humility. I'm, I'm, I'm so honored, but of course I can't accept, you know. It's a, the, the, the award, though, for the best Oscar for tonight goes to for special effects. It simulates things that are fictional but do not exist, and that award goes to all of us senators and congressmen. Hey, 
on the national level, if they had the politicians like we do, like Mr. O'Connor here, we'd be in a hell of a lot better shape than we are as a country. So, all right, now to do the job that Mary Claire asked me to do, to present our first champ. <laughs> you know, I'd eventually get to it, right? Uh, now is it now? <laughs> Mary Claire, if I wanted that kind of treatment, I could have just stayed home. <laughs> Sorry, Rose. <laughs> hey, do, I'm going to go home and give her a good listening to later. Okay. Now, for the first Chamber Award of the evening, the Hudson Chamber Member of the Year Award. This award is presented to a member in good standing with a minimum of one year membership who has demonstrated significant involvement within the organization during the past 12 months. Our recipient this year has been involved in the Hudson Chamber Tour of Homes for the past four years. Logistics are very important, in fact, critical to the success of this event as we are directing over 1,500 tour goers to the homes and sites around our community. This volunteer sets up all the signage and delivers all the items needed for the homeowners prior to the tour, and then following the tour, picks everything up, it was set up and, and gets it back where it needs to be stored. Our recipient has also, res also responded to the call for help when the chamber offices moved and needed help with uh, all of the items from the old chamber office to the new chamber office on 2nd Street. And if you haven't seen the new offices, stop and see the staff, they're wonderful. In addition to all the work on logistics, uh, this person also helped recruit two large businesses to the chamber this past year. And obviously membership is the lifeblood of the chamber. And, and they helped us not only to meet, but exceed our goals, as Angel told you. In addition to his chamber volunteer efforts, this recipient has also been a public servant for over 30 years, serving actively on the Town of Hudson Board. On behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, it's my pleasure to present the Chamber Member of the Year Award to Mr. Tim Foster. <laughs> Tim, come on up, please. Thank you. Volunteerism is really important in our community, and I want to make sure that all of you continue to provide that to this Hudson area. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I guess John didn't really read his script. So, uh. <laughs> you, want, you want to tell me where my script is on this part? Sure. sure. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Okay. Enjoy your meal for just a minute here while we argue <laughs> a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. Congratulations, Tim. John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> It's, uh, some would prefer a root canal and an enema than <laughs> at the same time. Right? Okay, keep going. Please join me in welcoming back to the podium Miss Angel Dorati to present the Small Business of the Year Award. Thank you, John. I'll follow the rules. The next award tonight is pres presented to the business of the year. Small business of the year. There are two awards in this category. One for a business with fewer than 20 employees and one for 20 or more employees. Members were judged on the following criteria. Staying power, staying power, response to adversity, innovative products and services, business philosophy, and contributions to the community. The first award will be presented to the business with the fewer, fewer than 20 employees. Granted a liquor license in July of 2017, after six months of city council meetings, this business opened December 30th, 2017. When they opened, they still had half of their back room begged off for construction that they were doing at night when they were not open. The kitchen opened two and a half months later. 
Their location was vacant for six years before it was opened. It was the former, former Fiesta local. Before that, it was Strike Zone, a Thai restaurant, a Vietnamese restaurant, a Broadway pizza, Uncle Barney's, and even the original Cozy Corner Inn. <laughs> the local charity fund was started nine months after they opened so they could offer meat raffles, which have raised an estimated $175,000. 100% of all proceeds go to the whole set ra- to host at these raffles or to another charity. In addition, they raised over 20,000 at the local charity fund's annual High Sox Open Golf Tournament. The owner said, 2022 was an easy year for business. Other than trying to stay staffed, the rising cost of goods, and the occasional equipment failures. This business will do something for everybody who comes in and asks. They try to go as big as possible when it comes to local people or families, especially their customers that fall on hard times or have medical issues that keep them from working. In 2021, one of their regular customers asked asked if she could nominate this business for a planter's peanuts, a nut above, (laughs) award to recognize good Samaritans. The owner said, sure, not thinking much of it. The business received a $50,000 award. In typical fashion, they gave some of that award money to a family that just lost half their income due to cancer and had a need to get back and forth to treatments. Another area this business tries to help is high school sports and extra activities for youth. At this time, it is my sincere pleasure on behalf of the Hudson Chamber to present the Small Business of the Year Award to Jonesy's local bar and grill and invite owner Jeremy Jones. Thank you. I'm going to set this down here. I'm going to keep it quick like the guy before me. Uh, (laughs) Solid speech. Uh, Start by saying thank you to Mary Claire and Angel. I had no intention of joining the chamber until Angel came up, sat me down, told me why I'm supposed to and why I will, and (laughs) so he did. Um, I brought my folks with me. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) Believe it or not, I probably wasn't the easiest child to raise. This is a shock to many. Um, Big thanks to Matt Puell. Not a fan of his, but thanks anyway. He's back there. Uh, When... We took it over, we were, or took over the spot and got our liquor license. We uh, were pretty short on capital. Matt helped out in a big way in a whole bit, bunch of different spots. Kind of, he helped renovate the inside of the place with his uh, experience in property management and whatnot, and it helped out a ton. And we did everything right and saved a lot of money in the process, and thank you. Still don't like you, but thank you. Um, thanks to my uh, brat 16 year old back there and my girlfriend they get tired every time we got to go in there and I got to say hi to 40 people before we can leave I get a lot of eye rolls for it Um, uh, huge thanks to my staff Blake in the back with a kitchen Uh, for those of you who haven't been in food's great he's a big reason why Jose uh, Sherpa those guys do a hell of a job Um, Keep things running smooth so I don't got to jump back there and screw things up. <laughs> Janelle out front does a huge deal. Those of you who have been, I'm, been in, I'm sure you've met her. I'm sure you've heard her, whether you tried to or not. <laughs> I think you can hear her from the bowling alley. <laughs> um, uh, one of the guys we mentioned earlier is another guy I say thank you to, not with us anymore, Fred Kramer. I worked for him at Dick's, and I only knew him for about two years, and I was just starting to get to know him when he passed. 
and what a guy that he was amazing. I learned a lot from him just by being around him. Uh, he did a lot for Hudson. I know he did a lot for the chamber and he did a lot for me as well. Um, the customers in the town of Hudson, um, we do a lot for Hudson. Hudson does way more for me and for our company and I mean it 100%. Uh, a little bit of a plug here. I'm probably going to come see if you, some of you shortly because I'm selling ads for the softball team. <laughs> They're going to be advertising in the outfield fences, so I'll say this, and I mean this. Uh, everything we put back into the community, and Hudson being the wonderful community that it is, we get back fivefold, and that's not an exaggeration. It makes it real easy, easy to give big any chance we can, whether it's for the booster program for high school sports, for something with the chamber, uh, all that works out real good. Um, that's about what I got for the evening. Appreciate y'all. Uh, have a good night. Congratulations, Jeremy. Please join me in welcoming Leanne to present the Large Business of the Year Award. Thank you, Angel. I am pleased to announce the Large Business of the Year Award. This company was founded in 1903. This company was initially founded in Hudson as a lumber company. The company moved across the river 10 years later and by 1929 had become the world's largest window frame company. Over the course of its 120 year history, its altogether spirit and commitment to innovation have helped it remain the industry leader and a special place to work. Today, it has a broad portfolio of different and better products and services for the new residential, home improvement, and light commercial building segments. This company has more than 13,000 employees across more than 30 manufacturing, distribution, and retail locations geographically located to serve customers in every region of the United States. Its corporate headquarters and largest manufacturing location remain in Bayport to this day. It also has a large manufacturing facility and distribution center located in Menominee. Approximately half of its employees work in its Minnesota and Wisconsin operations. In 2022, it donated nearly $5 million to nonprofits working to improve lives and strengthen communities. Its philanthropic contributions directly support organizations in the areas of housing, education, hunger, and healthcare in communities where their employees live and work. Its employees are actively involved in the community through volunteerism, and they support their employees in their volunteerism through programs that provide grants to the organizations to which they share their time and talents. On behalf of the Hudson Area Chamber of Commerce, it is my pleasure to present the Large Business of the Year Award to Anderson Corporation. At this time, I invite Eliza Klepich, Senior Director, Communications and Community, to come forward to accept the award. Hello. I'm not funny, so I'm not going to try to follow everyone that came before me, but they did a great job. Um, so it is a little known fact by many that Anderson was in fact founded on this side of the river. And though we moved 110 years ago to the Stillwater area where our headquarters is still today, we're incredibly proud of our beginnings on the Hudson side of the river um, and proud to call the St. Croix Valley home. The St. Croix Valley is a great place to do business. It's also a great place to live and work. And generations and generations of residents from throughout the valley have found meaningful careers at Anderson. And we're incredibly proud of all of our team members, including the more than 6,000 that reside throughout the St. Croix Valley, Wisconsin area, and throughout Minnesota. Um, thank you to the Chamber for the work you do to make Hudson a thriving, wonderful community for all of us. And thank you for this recognition.
congratulations, Eliza, and thank you. To present our next year, or our next award for the year, um, the Manufacturer Award, please join me in welcoming Jacob Scramstad with Cardinal Glass. Thank you, Lynn. And before this, I asked uh, Mary Claire if it would be all right to go off script, and she said it was okay, but I'm just going to assume that that permission has been revoked. Thanks, John. <laughs> <clears throat> so we'll put that one away. All right, so I'm honored to present uh, the Manufacturer of the Year Award. This award is presented for a company's sustainability practices, how they've contributed to the vitality of the business in the community, and community outreach. This recipient is a premier supplier of organic, non-GMO, and fair trade ingredients. It represents a global network of manufacturing partners who produce ingredients like cocoa, coconut, flowers, starches, oils and sweeteners, and, <clears throat> and supply those ingredients to consumer, or, yeah, consumer brands and manufacturers in the natural products industry. The company was founded in 1994 by owners who believed organic agriculture was the best path forward to regenerate our planet and sustain the lives of those who inhabit it. In 2017, the company became 100% employee owned. In 2022, the company celebrated five years of employee ownership, 20 years of supplying organic cocoa products, and 20 years of supplying organic and sustainably produced palm oils <clears throat> from Brazil. The greatest challenge in recent years was the impact of coronavirus pandemic on global logistics and supply chains, which caused product delays and significant cost increases. However, at the peak of the pandemic, when many global companies were struggling, this company was able to supply its customers with 15% more volume than the, than the prior year, which they attribute to strong international partnerships and the hard work of their employees. The company has experienced tremendous growth and expects that growth to continue as co consumers prioritize health and wellness and learn more about the effects of conventional chemical agriculture on, huma on human and planetary health. Community involvement is the foundation of its culture. There are three key programs to, contri to contribute to its community impact. First, employee volunteerism. Volunteering is highly encouraged with annual company goals for volunteer service. Employees receive paid time off up to 20 hours per employee annually for individual volunteer work in addition to regular company-sponsored volunteer events like river cleanup and food distribution packing. Secondly, corporate giving. Currently, the company donates 2.5% of its net profits to local and global initiatives which are focused on positively improving social and environmental efforts. Recipients are selected by employee-led or by an employee-led volunteer committee. And thirdly, matching gifts. Up to $200 annually per employee is allotted for a matching gift program, which allows employees to request company funds or company match funds for personal nonprofit contributions. So on behalf of the Hudson Chamber, it's my pleasure to present the Manufacturer of the Year Award to Saranda and invite Emma Nelson. the Quality Assurance Specialist to come forward and accept the award. Well, thank you. Um, we are so grateful to accept this award on behalf of all of our manufacturing partners from around the world. Food and agriculture, I think, is something we can agree on that connects all of us. And by providing a market for our manufacturers, we're able to share their stories, contribute to their livelihoods, and bring healthy food to tables in our community and all around the world. Saranda is honored to call Hudson home. We were founded here 28 years ago, and we'll continue to do all we can to support our community. Thank you for inspiring us, for energizing us, and for recognizing us. Thank 
Congratulations, Emma. And please join me in welcoming Chair-elect Linda Lakoski to present the Community Volunteer of the Year Award. Thank you, Jacob. This recipient has been in their current position for seven and a half years as executive director of a nonprofit social services organization. In addition to running the facility in Hudson, this pers person is also the director of the facility in White Bear Lake. Uh, while running these two locations, they also oversee the custodial services for 21 other locations. They have helped with the development of the Unlock It programs in western Wisconsin to encourage families to have fun in the great outdoors. In addition, they served as a peer leader for the company's Upper Midwest Association and served as the volunteer trainer for multiple career development programs for team members throughout the U.S. This recipient has been a member of Hudson Jaybreak Rotary since 2015, serving on its event, membership, finance, and visioning committees, and is currently serving as club president. Their community involvement includes serving on the following. Healthier Together, Mental Health Community Kids and Nature Action Team. Healthier Together, Thriving and Livable Community Action Team. Healthier Together, Health Equity Work Group. Mental Health First Aid Instructor, Golden Rule Initiative Committee, Hudson School District Mental Health Advisory Committee, Hudson Hospital Events Committee, White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce, White Bear Area Nonprofit Roundtable Group, and White Bear Area Many Faces Community Engagement Committee. On behalf of the Hudson Chamber, it is my pleasure to present the Community Volunteer of the Year Award to Chris Cost. Executive Director of the Hudson and White Bear Lake YMCA. I invite Chris to come forward. You couldn't have found a better picture, Mary Claire? Jeez, a better picture would have been uh, nice. <laughs> wow. Um, thank you, Mary Claire. Um, Lauren, Tyler, you guys don't know what an amazing chamber you really have. Um, thank you to my wife, who puts up on all the things that I do. Um, the nominating committee, and as I look around this room, all the individuals I've had the opportunity to serve with in volunteer roles throughout our community. Seven and a half years ago when I accepted the position at the YMCA, I realized that it was more than just overseeing a building. It was more than overseeing a gym and swim. It was about being part of community. And as I developed a relationship with a mentor and friend of mine, Tom Holland, who built the YMCA and was a very integral part of the Y, what he kept telling me was, it's community, it's community, it's community. And that's what I've tried to do, is get into the community because that's what we're all about. We want to make our community a better place to live for those that live, work, and play here. And the Chamber's a great way to be a part of that. So thank you all. Thank you, Mary Claire. Um, and thank you, Linda. Congratulations, Chris. Please join me in welcoming John Potter, a previous Marie Blakeman Award recipient to present our final award. Thank you, Linda. Our last award of the night has been presented since January 2000. The award is named after and in honor of Marie Blakeman, who passed away on December 31st, 1999, at the age of 82. Mrs. Blakeman and her husband Harry began Norlake, a commercial refrigeration company, in 1947. She served as its secretary treasurer until his death in 1976 when she became chair. Marie was instrumental in the creation of the Hudson Memorial Hospital 
in the Hudson Medical Center. She served on the boards of Hudson Memorial Hospital, the William H. Phipps Foundation, the Phipps Center for the Arts, the First National Bank of Hudson, and the St. Paul Area YMCA Executive Council. She also served as the choir director at Trinity Lutheran Church in Hudson for 22 years. The award is given in her honor to signify a life well lived in service to one's community. Marie happened to introduce me to the 2022 recipient, and she would be delighted that this person is being honored with her namesake award. This person was born and raised in Stevens Point and received a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from MIT and a Doctor of Jurisprudence from Harvard Law School. That narrows the possibilities, doesn't it? <laughs> the recipient was a, naval, a Navy Civil Engineer Corps officer on active duty from 1965 to 1968. This person has lived in Hudson since 1979. The honoree practiced corporate law for 18 years, followed by solo practice after 1989. This person was twice appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate to the Minnesota-Wisconsin Boundary Area Commission, serving as its executive director from 1998 through 2001. The recipient has a lifetime record of community involvement and service, including the American Heart Association, FFA Boosters, The Longer Table, Bethel Lutheran Church, Hudson Area Library, St. Croix County Council on Aging, St. Croix County Historical Society, Hudson Rotary Club and Hudson Daybreak Rotary, St. Croix Economic Development Corporation, Education Foundation of Hudson, Hudson Hospital, the Phipps Center for the Arts, and the Boy Scout Troop number 140. And I'm just getting started. This person's greatest passion is natural resources, and the honoree received the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Secretary's Director Award in 2015, and is known for their work in environmental education and mentoring. Affiliations include the St. Croix Valley Bird Club, Tropical Wings, St. Croix Valley Sportsman's Alliance, Earth Day, Urban Forestry, Friends of Willow River and Kinnikinick State Parks, Northwest Prairie Enthusiasts, Partnership Team of the Lower St. Croix Management Commission, North Woods and Waters, and the St. Croix River Association. This person also excelled in the government sector with service to the school board, the town board, and the St. Croix County Board of Supervisors serving as chair for six years. The recipient currently serves the Hudson Home and Garden Club, Hudson Grocery Co-op, the American Legion Honor Guard, Yellowstone Trail Heritage Day, Riverfest, Sustain Hudson, Hudson Hot Air Affair, St. Croix Valley Foundation Board of Directors, and as chair of the County Board of Adjustment. It is my understanding that there are many stories of how this person received their well-known nickname, but this is the one told to me. When it came time to introduce himself to a group of boys he didn't know at his first scout camp, he certainly wasn't going to tell them his first name. So he proudly stated, hello boys, my name's Buck, and it's stuck. It is my pleasure to announce Clarence Buck Malik as the recipient Set. <laughs> this is just overwhelming. Uh, thank you. This uh, continues, probably breaks a long line of very deserving people <laughs> for this award. Um, any credit uh, should go to my wife, Linda. Thank you.
All right. I th- I, okay. C- congratulations, Buck. And uh, thank you so much, John, for presenting that award. So um, I thought there was going to be... Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we are almost ready to be able to go out and connect and enjoy some beverages. But before we do, I have a few more things. So you know me. Okay, we got a little agenda to follow here. So first of all and foremost, thank you, Angel for your time and your continued dedication and all of your hard work this past year. And Leanne, I look forward to working with you this year and the entire board as we welcome Heath and Maria to that team. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you to all of the sponsors of tonight's program, to our annual meeting committee, to Meg for joining us tonight, and the award presenters, uh, yes, all of the award presenters, <clears throat> and uh, again, congratulations to all of the award winners, and I really love people who follow my script. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so I do appreciate those that do that. Uh, following the program, we're going to invite the award winners to meet us at the photo op. Um, it's that fabulous photo backdrop that you're going to see just outside in the hallway for photos. And if your birthday is closest to today's date, and are you going to believe it that we have a birthday here today? Jeff Doe, yay, his beautiful wife Kendra works at Anderson Corporation, and Jeff, they were on the Christmas tour of homes for a second time. Thank you, Jeff. It is your birthday. Yay, Jeff. So if your birthday, like Jeff, is closest to today's date, uh, the centerpiece is for you to take home. We have bags for you to take them out in this cold, thanks to Shelly. But again, thank you to Hudson Flower Shop for those beautiful um, items. All right, so while you're figuring that out, whose birthday it is? You told me to do it sooner. All right. So who figured it out at your table? You all have a plan? All right. So I am. So uh, before you all leave, just a, uh, a huge thank you again. Before you all leave, a huge thank you for your investment and involvement in the Hudson Chamber. We cannot accomplish what we do without each and every one of you, and we greatly appreciate your dedication. And thank you so much for joining us here tonight. And I look forward to working with you as we continue to make Hudson a great place to live, work, visit, and do business. Good night, everyone. Thank you.